This is Geometry Lesson 3-4, Algebra Properties Used in Geometry. In Algebra last year, you studied all kinds of equations and you learned how to solve an equation for a variable and you learned how to manipulate your equation so that you could isolate a variable on one side. And when you did that, you used a lot of these postulates without even really knowing it or being aware of it. So we're going to introduce these postulates and we're going to tie your solving of equations to the beginning or the introduction of, of writing a proof. And so in this lesson I'm going to go through and talk about these postulates of equality and inequality and then we're going to do a few proofs together. The first set is postulates of equality and those are some basic things that we use the first one is the reflexive property and many students ask me often why why do we have that one and so I like to draw a picture here I have a picture of a square but it has it, it's broken down into two triangles and if you notice that the side AC is a part of triangle ADC and it's a part of triangle ABC well if I were to pull those apart I would know that AC length would be the same in triangle ADC and triangle ABC. So basically this reflexive proper property allows us to say that the side lengths are equal. The symmetric property allows us to say if you solve an equation and you get 4 equals A, it allows us to just switch this around and say A equals 4. The other piece is uh, the transitive property, and the transitive property, I can't tell you, I can't stress enough, you will use that so many times this year that I, I hope uh, that we can get you familiar with that right away. The transitive property of equality says that if A equals B and B equals C, then A has to equal C. So if, if this box has the same contents as this box, so these are equal, and B's content has the same as C's content, then these two have to be the same. Okay. Now we are going to use the transitive property in all different types of situations. We're going to use it in inequalities, we're going to use it with parallel lines, in congruence, the, all kinds of things, the transitive property will come up. So this is just an introduction of it. Some other things that you will use um, postulates of equality is when we're dealing with operations. So in when you solved equations, often you would add the same thing to both sides. We add the same things to both sides because it didn't change the um, equal equality of each side of our equation, but it helped us uh, help our equation look different. So we ha we were able to add things to both sides, but we were also able to multiply things to both sides and didn't change the equality of the equation. So that's the postulates of equality in operations. Now we can also um, look at postulates of inequality in operations. So let's take a look at the transitive property. If A is less than B and B is less than C, then A is less than C. Well, let's pretend 4 is less than 5 and 5 is less than 6. So does that make sense that um, 4 is less than 6? That's really what they're trying to get at here. Now the addition property of inequality, if A is less than B, if A is less than B, and we're assuming C is, is a, a positive value, or it's bigger than zero, then I know that if I add, I'm sorry, I jumped lines here. Let's look, I'm back up at the addition property of inequality. Let's look at that. If A is less than B, then if I add C to the same thing to both of them, A is still going, A plus C is still going to be less than B plus C. And then with the multiplication property, if A is less than B and I multiply A and B times C but assume that C is, is a positive value then AC is still going to be less than BC but if I do it with a negative value so say A is less than B and I multiply both A and B times a negative number then AC is going to switch to become greater than BC. So that just comes with the whole multiplying by a negative value. We know that that changes the signs. So that's why we have to have two parts when we multiply um, 
inequalities together. Then the last section is the postulates of equality and inequality. So equation to inequality postulate. If a and b are positive numbers and a plus b equals c, then c has to be bigger than a and c has to be bigger than b. So what that means is that if c is the sum of both a and b, then a part of that has to be smaller than c and the other part also has to be smaller than c since both parts make up the whole c. And then substitution property. You have already used substitution property this year. You used it when we were solving our systems, when we were trying to find intersection of points. We substituted values in to solve for uh, x and y. So what that means is if a equals b, then we may substitute for b in any expression. So if we have a equals b, I can take a out and put in b instead or the other way around. If I have um, b in my expression, I can take b out and substitute in a, assuming that I know a and b are both equal to each other. Now that we've gone through and looked at all these different postulates, we're going to apply these postulates to our equation solving process that we have used in algebra. So my first equation that I'm going to look at is 24x minus 12 equals 60. We can follow several steps as you can see here and get to the the solution that x equals 3. But the key piece here in geometry that we want to study is we have to have a justification for each of those steps. And so let's take a look at 24 minus or 24x minus 12 equals 60. When solving that equation, the first thing that we would do is add 12 to both sides. And when I do that, that cancels out the 12 here and I ended up with 24x equaling 72. Now, the, my justification for doing that is the addition property of equality. I added the same thing to both sides. So my justification for saying that 24x equals 72 is the addition property of equality. Now I kind of jump steps here. I didn't talk about what goes in this first line. This first line was 12, 24x minus 12 equals 60. My justification for having that there is that was given to me. That's the given. And when we start doing proofs, you will be able to get the first line of your justifications correct every time because it's always going to be the given. Now let's move on. So I'm at 24 times x equals 72. And now if I'm going to solve for x, I would say I'm going to divide both sides by 24. But if you look at your postulates of equality and operations, you don't have a division property of equality. You only have a multiplication property. But remember that dividing by, dividing by 24 is the same as multiplying by 1 over 24. So the multiplication property of equality can also be used for division because you can, you can multiply by that reciprocal. So the, the way we got to x equals 72 over, 20, over 24 is the multiplication property of equality. And you notice I'm starting to abbreviate. And as we start working through our, our proofs this year, you will do quite a bit of abbreviating. And uh, that's, that's OK. Now, our next step is that x equals 3. So when we did 24 or 72 divided by 24 and we say x equals 3, these two things are equivalent to each other. So all we did is we went from a fraction to decimal. One of the types of skills that you're going to be able need to perform is to, to look at various situations and apply expressions to them, to the situation to solve for whatever the question is asking. So let's take a look at this first problem here. They say that JMK, angle JMK, is x plus 37. And they also tell you that angle, the measure of angle KML is 2x minus 12. And the whole thing is the measure of seven, is 73 degrees. And remember, the angle 
addition postulate says my two parts can add up to the total. So I'm going to actually use that to, so, to write an equation. So I know the measure of angle JMK plus the measure of angle KML is going to equal the measure of angle JML. So I know that if I substitute now, there's another one of our postulates, if I substitute in place of JMK X plus 37 and in place of angle KML 2X minus 12, I know that that will be 73 degrees because I'm substituting 73 in place of JML. Then if I go ahead and solve my equation, I'm going to add my like terms, so that's 3X and I have uh, 12 minus, or 37 minus 12, that's going to give me 25. Set that equal to 73. I'm going to use the addition postulate, so I'm going to um, add a negative 25 to both sides. And so that gives me 3x equaling 48. And then if I multiply both sides by one third or divide by three, so I'm using my multiplication property, of equality to get that x equals 16. I have now answered the first question of what is x. But now I can use substitution in again to find out what the measure of KML is. So I'm going to write 2 times 16 minus 12, which would give me a total of 20 degrees. So I know that this measure is 20. Now if I know this is, this is 20, and I know the whole thing is 73, I know that this angle, this one, is going to be 53 degrees. So lots of things I can um, do here. Let's go to set um, number two. Suppose PQ bisects angle MPN. So let's just draw an angle. Doesn't matter how big the make the angle, just drawing a diagram. So MPN and PQ is di bisecting it, so we know it's going through the center. So I'm going to call this Q. And then this measure equals this measure. If MPQ is 39, then we know that QPN is 39 also. So MPN is going to be 39 plus 39, so that would give me 70 eight degrees for angle M, P, N. Okay, let's look at the last example that we have for this lesson that, that we're going to do together on the video. That is angle TRS and angle SRP form a linear pair. If the measure of TRS is 3A plus 5 and the measure of SRP equals 2A minus 25, find the measure of angle TRS. So before I even get started, I'm going to draw my linear pair and label it. And then I'm going to enter in my expressions 3a plus 5 and 2a minus 25. Okay, so when I do that, I know that if I have a linear pair, then I know the measure of angle TRS plus the measure of angle SRP has to equal 180 degrees because it's a linear pair. I also then can substitute another one of our postulates. I can substitute 3A plus 5 in place of angle TRS, and I can substitute 2A minus 25 in place of angle SRP, and I still know that that adds up to 180 degrees. Go ahead and combine like terms, so that's 5A minus 20 equals 180. Now I'm going to use more of my postulates that I did before. I'm going to add 20 to both sides, my addition property of inequality. So now I know that 5A is going to equal 200. Divide both sides by 5, but that's really using the multiplication property of equality. So that is A equals 40. Now that I know A equals 40, I can substitute it back in to answer my question of what is TRS. So 3 times 40 plus 5 is going to equal 120 plus 5. So I know that that is equal to 125, 125 degrees. I need my research. There we go. 
So this concludes the video for 3-4. We will continue working on the other examples in class next time we meet.